Okay, so um, welcome to my presentation. I will speak about the, um, so the keyword is that we simulate a population of agents and they play, what? Ah, it's cross. don't worry, I will just stay close here. Uh, so we simulate the population of agents and they play an abstract game and so we let the population evolve to see what kind of uh, strategy would survive and emerge in the long run. So let's start with the game. Uh, we have two players and each can have two possible actions of to cooperate or to defect. And so if, uh, if both cooperate, then both get three and so we call this payoff the reward payoff. And if both defect, then both get one, and we call this uh, payoff the punishment payoff. If one defect and the other cooperate, then the cooperator gets zero, and is called the suckers. And if, <laughs> no, they do that in the literature, it's not me. <laughs> it's not me. Uh, and the defector will get four, and that, is, uh, that payoff is called the, the temptation payoff. So how do we solve this game? Uh, let's look at the payoff table of the player one which is the, just the yellow colors. So player one, think like this. If the other cooperate, then I would either get three or four, and because four is bigger than three, then I would choose to defect. And um, <clears throat> so the, the assumption here is the, just the, the weak rationalities, uh, which means that uh, player would prefer to have a higher payoff. And so <clears throat> in the case that the other defects, then I would either get zero or one, and because one is bigger than zero, then I would choose to defect. And so the action cooperate will be crossed out because it will never be chosen in any case. And so we did do the same for the player two, and so what is left here is the outcome that both will defect, and we get, uh, so both will get one, and this is the equilibrium of the game. So this game tried to capture the conflict between the self-interest and the social welfare outcome. Uh, why is that? Because it is the self-interest that, um, that push both players into the, the outcome of uh, defective uh, uh, defection, but uh, we both would like to do better than that because we can get to the outcome of uh, both cooperate and both get three. And <clears throat> so we consider the game in two settings, the one-shot and the repeated interaction. So in the one-shot settings, two players will meet for just one time and they play the game for just one time and then that's it. So you can think about this is the match between the strangers or the anonym, anonymous matchings in which you play the game with another person in a different room and you don't see that person. And uh, the second um, setting is the in repeated interaction in which a player will be matched for several, for many rounds together. So. Um, so you can think about your partners, your colleague, your boss, and people that you have enough data history to form expectation on how they would behave in a particular situation. And this is the kind of repeated interaction that uh, we are talking about. So um, the strategy set for the two settings are also different. In the one-shot game, we have only two possible strategies, which is to cooperate or to defect. And we just solve the game before. And, but for the repeated game, um, the number of strategies, it, grow, it grows very fast with the number of rounds. So for example, if we have just 10 rounds, then one possible strategy is to cooperate all the time. And another example is that I can cooperate today and tomorrow I defect and then just so on and so forth. So if we're supposed to play the game infinitely, then the number of strategies would grows to be infinite. And so that would be very difficult to calculate and we, this, um, motivates it to run simulation on the matters. And so we need some uh, kind of uh, strategy representation, and we represent the strategies using the finite state the machine. And <clears throat> here I show the, um, the machine that has only one, one state, it's plays cooperate, and the arrows, it means that uh, if the other cooperate or defect, so whatever the other does, this machine will stay in the, in the state of playing cooperates. And so this game will have two unconditional machines that is always cooperate and always defect. So is it okay so far? Okay. Um, so this is um, a bit more complex machine and it, it has two states of uh, cooperate and defect. So it start to play cooperate, the two circle mean that it is the initial state. 
And so uh, from the second round onward, it mimics whatever you place in the previous round. So if you cooperate, it will cooperate. But if you defect, it will jump to the state of defecting. So it is called tit for that because um, it is able to punish if you defect. But if you, it is also forgiving in the sense that if you go back to play cooperate, then it also go back to play cooperate. And so this, uh, this is a machine that is called Grim Trigger because uh, once it also starts to cooperate, but once you you defect, it will jump to the state of defecting, and it will never goes back. So it never forgive and never forget. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> so let's uh, match the did for that with the defects machine to see what happens. So in the first round, the did for that will play cooperate and defects will play defects, so we get zero and four. And in the second round, the <clears throat> uh, the default that will jump to the state of defect things, and defect will continue to play defects, so we have one and one. And because the defect machine never changed its strategies, uh, so they would, um, so is the default that, and they would get uh, one onwards. So with, uh, with this kind of, uh, of reasoning, we have uh, the automaton structures uh, like this. So all the, in the code, so in all the tables are hash table. So I show here the examples of uh, the, the always cooperate machine, so, and you see that the, it has only one state, uh, state zero, and the action in the state is to cooperate, and the uh, dispatch, the transition rule is that uh, if the opponent play defect or cooperate, it stay in the state zero of cooperating. And so let's come to the simulation. Uh, imagine a world with many slots, so we populate them with agents. And these agents will adopt the strategies and they will play the game. Uh, and the agents here, they do agencies. So we give them a contract of a, a strategy and they will play by the book until they terminate. And we try to mimic evolution. Uh, evolution has two sub-process, uh, the selection process and the mutation process. The selection process is to select the, the fittest with, and at the expense of the, of the poor doers. And the mutation process is to keep adding new strategy into the, into the selection pool. And so we run simulation of many cycles, and one cycle will have three phases. The matching phase, the learning phase, and the mutation phase. Uh, so this is the matching phase. So initially, we have a population with many agents, and then we match them randomly in pair, and let them play the game. And then we get the payoff to calculate the fitness. The star means that I make extra slide, but uh, there will be no time for that. But if you like to see it, I can show you later. So um, the fit net vectors will be used in the, in the second phase of learning. Um, so in the learning phase, we, uh, a small fraction of the population will be allowed to learn. So they observe the whole population, and they see that there is someone that is doing better, and someone is doing worse than them. And they would uh, change the strategies according to the attractiveness of the, of the current uh, strategies. So technically, they randomize over the fitness vectors. And in these examples, one agent changed from brown into blue colors, so we have that there is one more blue and one less brown. So this is what we mean by saying that the, the better strategy will, will expand at the expense of the poor doers. So in the mutation phase, um, a small fraction of the population will be able to mutate. So they, we can say that they are trying to experiment, or they are making mistakes, or they are trying to innovate. And, and what they do is that uh, in the learning phase, they change strategy, but they change to the current strategy in the, in the population. But in the mutation phase, they choose new strategies from the machine space. So it's completely new, and it's, um, it is to keep adding uh, new variety into the selection pool. And so uh, just to recap, this is the cycles. Uh, one cycle, we have population, and we match them. We let them learn, we let them mutate, and then just uh, like that over and over again. So uh, here I would show the results. Um, we plot here the population average to pay off over cycles, over times, and time is cycles. And um, <clears throat> so the, there is um, the lie um, of the punishment lie. It will be the red lie, and it is uh, when everybody defects everybody. So everybody get one, and so the average of the population is one. And the blue line is the reward line in which uh, everybody would cooperate, so everybody would get three, and so 
we would get the average of three. And you can see that uh, in the one-shot game, the population average will always be at the, at the punishment line. But when it comes to the, uh, to the when, when we let them play the repeated game and uh, the pattern change, and so one thing to, to note here is that it appears the cooperative periods. And the second thing is that these um, cooperative periods is not for sure. So if we run the simulation long enough, the societies will go through um, good and bad. And so it is like a cycle of cooperation and defection. And it um, just go on so like that. So uh, one question to add is, so what happened in, in this cooperation period? And, so, uh, and what kind of strategies that are able to s sustain cooperation in the societies. And so I would show here just some um, examples, like very brief uh, uh, machine that, uh, popular machine in, the, in some cycles. And for example, in this first examples, we have here this machine that it looks complicated, but it actually it is a did for that because it start to play cooperate. And so if you cooperate, it stay in cooperate. And if you defect, it jump to the defect state and so on and so forth. So, so in this second example, we have this uh, machine that um, it exploit cooperate cooperators. So if if it is matched with the always cooperate, it will play defect. And, and if if it is matched with the defectors, it will also it play defects. But it is not defectors because uh, they machine of this kind they are kind enough among themselves. So you can see that defectors they always play defect no matter with no matter who is that, who is the opponents. But this kind of machine, they, they are kind enough among themselves. They play some round of defect, but then they cooperate enough to get the, uh, the average to be uh, very high. Actually, the, the, lie, uh, the population average is not exactly at the reward line. It is a little bit lower. So uh, let's see that they are kind enough among themselves. And um, in this... Um, Example: We have the machine that um, also exploit cooperators, and it is able to to play defect to the defectors. But they alternate among themselves, so they get one three, one three, one three. So this is why they get the average of around two. And another, uh, the last example here is um, this machine. It has, you can see that it has many states, but actually there are only two states that will be reached. And it is uh, technically it is a green trigger because it starts to play cooperate, and if you defect, it will jump to the state of defectings, and it just stay there whatever you do. So, from simulation like this, uh, we can <clears throat> suggest an interpretation that says that um, sufficiently long horizon of repeated interaction can stabilize cooperation in the societies, and. And so that is basically uh, what I have to show you. The code is uh, on uh, on my GitHub, but it's not very very good code. Uh, no, but I'm working on it, and <laughs> and I'm asking Vincent to to some time to look at it and to revise it. So, and also, um, okay. So if you have anything to say, then please. Oh, thank you. The uh, population that was allowed to learn or observe, was yeah. that randomly selected, or how did you choose which agents could learn? Um, it should be randomly chosen, yeah, because uh, if you choose, what would you choose? I, I was just wondering what Yeah, so, yeah. It's... Did, you, did you look at any randomized uh, agents? Um, what do you mean by random in in the population? Yeah, so that when when to look at it? Uh, for example, an agent that if it sees cooperation will, with probability point five, ah. choose ah. defect, and with probability point five, so, choose cooperate. Okay, so you mean the the agent that um, probabilistic machine? So 
Yeah, it's uh, these machines are deterministic in, in which you know the the arrow are just definitive. So you can choose if if you defect, then I jump to the state at the for sure. But of course, the, there is the machine that can randomize. So if you defect, I would jump to the next state, just point five, and yeah, it's, it's so much more uh, difficult and. I I think I w I'm trying to get to there, but it is very long way. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, how how many so when, we, when we communicate about your code, <laughs> you uh, you mentioned that there are many different flavors of machine games that are in your field in economics. And uh, I will say I I started uh, creating a unitized version of this because she, what she really needs is a family of machine games that could be all be done and distilled into a unit, you just pass in a little flavor that changes the game from finite machines to mem machines with memories and whatever. But I'm out of cycle, so I'm asking for a volunteer who knows units to help her out to produce <laughs> the other family members of that uh, economic uh, uh, theory here. It would be really cool because she could easily then start up many more simulations. And, and yeah. you should also be familiar with parallelism. That would be really cool. Right, right. Call for help. Yeah, please. <laughs> please. Right. Anyone else? Ben, Ben. So last question, I think. I was just wondering what percentage of the population did you change? Sorry, what? What percentage what? of the population? What percentage of the population changed strategy? That I allowed to learn? Yeah, which, how, what percentage yeah, was the yellow? Uh, around 10%. It's this, uh, if you cannot, it do it too fast because um, um, it will fluctuate between, you know, like if 100% is allowed to change, then the population will, like, it's, it has very exotic behavior. It just jumps very fast from this equilibrium to another one. And yeah, so you just have, you can, there is a limit that you allow them to learn at. And also because uh, we learn at very low, slow rate, so uh, it would be more reasonable to to be like to let them just ten percent or five percent to learn at uh, at one, one in one day in one cycle. I think it's very interesting that it jumps up even just ten percent. Right? You mean the punctuate? Yeah. yeah, it's uh, yeah they call it the punctuate equilibrium. So uh, it just actually it looked like this, but the number of cycles is very big. It's like 500 cycles for that slide out. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you.